auf Gleis 1 von Ure, die Hinaltuch nach Samedan zu Zermetzali einspoltert. In Samaden mit Anschluss an den Schnellzug nach Musiskuh. Abfahrt um 11.04 Uhr. Pontresina Station. Here, the overhead AC network of the Rätische Bahn changes to the DC system of the Bernina line. For centuries, the Bernina Pass has linked the Engadine with the Poschiavo Valley, initially by no more than a steep trail. Pontresina's strategic location at the entrance of the pass ensured its importance and it became a natural starting point for the Bernina Bahn, which was built in stages between 1908 and 1910. This was Pontresina back in the 1950s, with electric locomotive 222, a GE24, and 38 wagon, a BDE44, which was to be rebuilt in 1979 as support power unit XE44, number 9922. The first plans for a railway over the Bernina emerged late in the 19th century, but never materialized. Though the desire to link the Puschklaff region south of the Bernina to the Engadine north of it remained strong. Although part of the Swiss canton of Graubünden, the Puschklaff is an isolated region close to the Italian border and blocked by the Bernina. The incentive for a railway was mainly economic. The stagecoach connection between the Engadine and Italian Veltilin regions involved an arduous nine-hour journey, which was easily disrupted by the weather. Punctuality was shaky at best. Railway lines at high altitude have to deal often with severe winter conditions. The Bernina initially only ran during the summer season. The danger of avalanches and the difficulty of safely removing snow precluded continuous services. The line was cleared once a year in spring at the beginning of the season. In 1912, a winter service to Alpbrum was offered for the first time as an experiment. Its success prompted the directors of the Bernina to extend services across the entire line. However, avalanche protection was so limited that long periods without a service were no exception. The construction of snowsheds was ordered in the same year. On the way to Ospizio Bernina, near Bernina Suot, we get to meet electric Schneeschleuder 9218 for the first time on its return to Pontresina. Whilst pushing the hydraulic plough, we run parallel to the road over the pass, which is closed due to severe winter conditions. The Rätische Bahn driver keeps a sharp eye on the plough and his fingers on the controls to respond when necessary. Not only snow may be on the line. At 7,400 feet above sea level, Ospizio Bernina is the highest station on the Rätische Bahn. The exposed location means snowdrifts can build up to enormous heights. Continuing on to Poschiavo, the plough is no longer needed. Ever since the Bernina opened, snow and wind have created problems for rail line staff. Station master Marco Bachmann knows this all too well. 
We can't see the switch signals, so we can't depart. Man and machine are tested frequently in their efforts to keep the trains on time. A train from Pontresina arrives in Ospizio Bernina in a heavy snowstorm to await the train from Poschiavo in the opposite direction. The conductor too lends a helping hand to remove snow from the switches or points. Switch signals are placed up to 16 feet or 5 meters high to keep them visible in deep snow. deep snow and high winds, employees have their work cut out, as Marco Bachmann can tell. From this station, we've got a lot of work when there's heavy snow. The Bahnmeister is responsible for keeping the line free of snow. That needs people. Der, der, wir sagen dem der Baumeister mit seinen Leuten zuständig. Das braucht sehr viele Leute. Wir haben zwei Kunden. We work with two snow clearance crews, but we're not responsible for them. We ensure a secure service and possible line closure. Wir machen die Fahrordnung und die Streckensperrung, dass sie raus können und so. Clearing the line is for these teams. On the Bernina line, the Rätische Bahn combats snow with XROT ET 9218 and 9219 both delivered in 1967. The 9218 is based in Pontresina and the 9219 in Poschiavo. The two electro schleuders or rotary snow plows are pushed by an electric or one of two hybrid GEM 44 locomotives available. These hybrid locomotives are normally fed by the overhead power line, but under adverse conditions they can also rely on power from two 12-cylinder diesel engines on board. The pusher is controlled from the Schloeder. The two motors on board the Schloeder are fed by the catenary overhead power line or cable connection from the pusher. 
The Retishaban uses Spreader X9132 to enlarge the path created by the plow. The spreader is pulled by a second locomotive. The wider clearance is needed mainly to prevent wind and snow from quickly blocking the line again. This train arrives at Alpgrim with hydraulic plow XK9143. These plows began to replace the manually controlled units in 1966. In winters with heavy snowfall, employees at stations along the line are constantly busy removing snow by hand from key places like switches. In even such arduous conditions, some people will not have their trip to and from Alp Grum denied. On the way to Basquiavo, the plough also removes the snow between the rails. Behind Cavalia, the line drops down like a serpentine to Basquiavo at 3,300 feet or just over a thousand meters. This stretch contains gradients as steep as one in 14, which for trains is seriously steep and the locomotives must squeeze round curves at a radius of only 55 yards also magnificently tight. Die-hard Retishaban fans are not disturbed by snow and frostbite. In Poschiavo, the Retishaban usually leaves the winter blues behind. The snowplow is duly uncoupled with assistance from old number 151. It is 6 a.m. and minus 19 degrees Celsius. Electro Schlöder 9218 is the first vehicle to leave Pontresina for Alp Grum this day. Sparks fly from the ice-covered overhead power line and create a haunting effect. The line is being cleared of last night's snow and massive drifts. This first outing also provides the linemaster or bahnmeister 
an insight as to where more work might be needed. The crew enjoys a beautiful sunrise. Once in Alpgrim, there is time to temporarily switch off the overhead wire and allow the driver to clean his snow-covered machine. A few hours later in Pontresina, it is still freezing, but the sun is shining. In the station, employees prepare a plough for a regular train to Ospizio Bernina. Here, we see the snow-covered Bernina Häuser. The original station was demolished in 1987. In the 1950s, there was a lot less snow here when a train from Tirano met with number nine. Converted to an XE44 unit in 1953, this electric is still on the roster as number 9920. The snow is cleared down to a level below the railheads. On the run, the plough is lowered between the rails and raised whenever obstructions, such as level crossings or switches, are encountered. In the days of manually controlled ploughs, they were sometimes raised too late, with dire consequences. In 1966, the Reitische Bahn introduced hydraulic ploughs which are controlled from the electric's cab. A glimpse from 1937 features car number 22, which is still around in rebuilt form as number 30. The fight against the snow hasn't changed much since. First, the Schneeschleuder sets out to clear a path about 12 feet or 3 meters 60 wide, which is then widened by the adjustable spreader to almost 20 feet or 6 meters. In those days, it was a rough and sometimes dangerous ride. In 1937, the Bernina Bahn workshops in Poschiavo built spreader X1002 to a Norwegian design. The flaps were mounted on a flat wagon and could be adjusted manually to the maximum width of 20 feet. When snow was heavy, the procedure went like this. First, a Dampfschleuder, German for steam rotary, made the initial path. Then the spreader, pulled by an electric unit, widened the space. The spreader heaped the snow on the track and this was then removed by a second Dampfschleuder. Spreader X9132, used nowadays, is actually old X1002 rebuilt with hydraulically operated flaps, which are now controlled from the pulling electric. But that human touch remains indispensable at times. As proof of the hard conditions here, the Bernina line is the only one in Switzerland to use the spreader. It allows for larger intervals between line clearing and ordinary ploughs can be deployed less frequently.
The job is done when the spreader arrives in Ospizio Bernina, closely followed by Electro Schleuder 9218. To reduce possible damage, avalanches were often triggered early, in a controlled manner. From around 1934, Swiss Army mortar grenades were occasionally used. Sometimes, very loud firework rockets were used to air shock the snow and provoke avalanches, although this method was hardly accurate in anything but very low winds. The most hazardous method of avalanche control was by skiers. This footage shows one of those brave individuals being caught in an avalanche. According to the records, the skier was unhurt. The line often suffered damage from avalanches. A special task force would then clear the line and, if necessary, also repair the track. Another snow fighting vehicle was X-1001. Despite its size, this plough was effective only when used regularly with limited depths of snow. It could not cope with deep, wet or that densely packed avalanche snow. Snow then tended to accumulate ahead of the plough instead of being pushed aside. Under such circumstances, the thrust required for the plough was so high that this sometimes derailed it. When that happened, a hand shovel was the only solution. Any derailment was reported as soon as possible to the Bahnmeister, German for rail supervisor, who then assembled a crew to clear the line. Early in 1910, the Bernina Bahn ordered a new machine to speed up snow clearance. The new machine was inspired by a successful example on the Gotthard line, which with its large rotating fan had tackled the deepest snowdrifts without problems since 1896. Later, in 1910, the Swiss locomotive builder SLM in Winterthur produced a self-propelling steam-powered rotary snowplow. Such a Dampfschleuder could work the line without depending on an overhead power supply. To cope with the steep gradients and tight curves on the Bernina, the Dampfschleuder featured two three-axle bogies, each driven by two cylinders. Coal and water supplies were carried in a two-axle tender. 
This unique machine was in fact a heavy articulated unit equipped with snow fighting apparatus. It worked so well that the line from St. Moritz to Ospizio Bernina remained open despite the high altitude and heavy snowfall of the winter of 1911-1912. The Bernina Bahn quickly ordered a second Dampfschleuder to keep the rest of the line open. The Dampfschleuder requires a crew of three. The fireman has his place in the rear between boiler and tender while his colleagues work the controls up front. The Dampfschleuder is usually pushed by an electric to have full boiler capacity available for snow clearance. In case overhead power is not available either, hybrid locomotive 801 or 802 does the pushing. force is not always called for. In Ospizio Bernina, the platforms are cleared with a handy little street machine. There is plenty of time for this task now as the line is blocked. An electric failed to stay on the track in one of the snowsheds near Alp Grim after hitting a thick patch between the rails. After several hours' delay, a train from Pontresina arrives in Ospizio Bernina. A 
Apparently, the dispatcher was a little optimistic, and the train has to wait. The driver keeps everyone informed, but in such glorious weather, none of the passengers seems to be in a hurry. A train arriving from Tirano proves the problem has been solved and that traffic may proceed. With the derailment solved, the rescue train and crew return to their base in Pontresina. By the end of the day, Hybrid Loco 802 and Work Unit 9924 return in Hospizio Bernina. Both machines await the oncoming train before proceeding to Pontresina. In perfect circumstances, we are headed towards Poschiavo with the hydraulic plow. Judging from the rod in the middle and the snow flashing sideways, the plow has been lowered.
Alp Grimm in perfect winter weather. Although the temperature hovers around freezing, the sun makes it very pleasant. In winter, the switches demand constant attention. Traffic may be brought to a halt if only one of the switch blades gets stuck. Here in Alpgrim, the pauses between trains are filled by further cleaning of the station. Elektroschleuders 9218 and 9219 are the successors to the two steam schleuders. Hydraulic spreader 9132 is used here as well. In the 60s, the Rätische Bahn decided to order two new Schlöders for the Bernina. One requirement was that they should be capable of working on other lines as well in times of emergency. 9218 and 9219 were built by the Swiss firm of Bailhack, who specialize in snow fighting machinery. They can remove up to 6,000 tons of snow per hour. Like their predecessors, they clear a path to a width of 12 feet. The snow can be thrown up to 80 feet or 25 meters away in a direction which can be adjusted. If either X rot 9218 or 9219 is called for outside the 1000 volt DC territory of the Bernina, they can only do so when accompanied by one of the hybrid locomotives. When the job is done and the weather perfect, Alp Grum makes one feel on top of the world.
In a harsh winter, Cavalia is cold and deserted. But on a sunny day, it is well worth a visit just to soak up the quiet atmosphere and the occasional passing train or visitors. Spizio Bernina, on the other hand, is buzzing with noise from the crew hard at work on the indoor turntable. Here, the steam rotaries used to be turned. A clean switch is thrown in the desired direction. Pontresina, that is, home to this crew. However, an unpleasant surprise awaits them. Poschiavo's 9219 is crippled by a shot bearing and is not available for the next day. Pontresina's 9218 must substitute, but this is pointing in the wrong direction for snow clearance from Poschiavo. Though in contrast to the old Dampfschleuders, this machine no longer requires a turntable.
In the end, a proud Marco Bachmann reflects. Over the last 20 years, we have never once had to close the line for a whole day. But the pass is regularly closed because of the avalanche danger. The Bernina line is today better protected against avalanche than in the past. In the 50s and 60s, we built many avalanche galleries, which have protected the line from damage and closure ever since. Damit die Lawinen drüber gehen und so, ist eigentlich praktisch, ich sage ich, in den letzten 20 Jahren nie mehr tagelang gesperrt gewesen, wie einmal früher. <lacht>